It's an upside down splat. <laughs> hey everybody, hi, this is Leslie at GoToKitchens.com. Splat is hanging upside down today. This is Splat, by the way, on Facebook. Let's turn this camera around. There we go. Hi everybody, welcome, 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 welcome. We are making sauerkraut today. So excited. Oh my gosh, like there's tons of viewers on Facebook. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for being here. We are making sauerkraut. Yuck! No, wait. I'm going to change your mind about sauerkraut. I'm going to tell you a little story about sauerkraut today that maybe will change your mind because I used to say yuck to sauerkraut too. Yuck! It stunk so bad. That's why I put in the title, What's All the Stink About? What is that smell? <laughs> Robin still says that. So before we get started, let me introduce myself. By the way, this is Splat. Anytime you see Splat come up, um, Splat is just ate some. Awesome. Way to go, Victoria. <laughs> yeah, yuck. This is Splat. Anytime you see Splat come up in my broadcast on Periscope, that means we are in the kitchen. So if this is the first image that you see on Periscope, then that means we're in the kitchen. He is my kitchen helper. Love Splat. Love him, love him, love him. I give him away every once in a while, so stay tuned for that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's talk. Let me introduce myself. My name is Leslie. I have a website, gotokitchens.com. Nothing for sale over at Goto Kitchens. The only thing that I want you to buy is I want you to buy into your own health. <laughs> the smell doesn't bother you, and it shouldn't, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. So right down here in the corner, if you would share out to your followers, I would greatly appreciate that. I see a lot of you have already done that. Thank you so much for doing that. On Facebook, you are welcome to share out live and you can comment uh, right down in the section below. And if you want to know more about me um, on Facebook, there will be a link right below this broadcast and you can go find out more about go-to kitchens and what I do. So I consider myself a light bulb expert. And I have to tell you guys that I had a light bulb moment uh, with sauerkraut. And I'm going to tell you my story really briefly right now. So thank you, thank you everybody for sharing out. Thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time out of your day to be here with us. So let's talk quickly about my story. So when I was a kid, my parents used to buy sauerkraut. And they would buy it in the, hey Ben, it's good to see you. Uh, they would buy it in the cans. Like those, you know, just cans of regular old sauerkraut, right? And they would buy it in the cans, and when they opened it, it would almost make me gag. It smelled so foul. I was just like, ugh. And so that's the only association I have with sauerkraut. Quite frankly, it smelled like somebody passed some serious gas. And so that's the only, that is the only thing that I could think about thinking about eating sauerkraut. So all of my health friends, everybody that does health blogs that I work with, everybody I worked with was like, you gotta try some fermented foods. I'm like, no, I'll just take my probiotic. I'm good. I'm not eating fermented foods. So it rolls around this past July. I've not been fermenting, I know, right? Stinky. Uh, I've not been fermenting that long. It rolls around this last July. My good friend Annette, who was with us yesterday making yogurt, which I'm gonna show you after this broadcast today. Hey, welcome, thanks for being here, Carrie. Uh, hey, Aunt Martha, hi, Aunt Martha, hi. We made your persimmon pudding for dinner one night and it was a tremendous hit, thank you so much. My Aunt Martha's here along with my cousin Patty. Happy birthday, Steve, sorry, gotta get some family business out of the way. It's so good to see you guys, thank you for being here. Um, ben saying, Aunt Martha, we love Aunt Martha, we do for sure. You guys remember me talking about Aunt Martha and the recipe that she wrote me out for persimmon pudding, right? I know. Hi to my family. That's amazing. It's amazing. So, so glad to have you here. That's so cool. So cool. So, um, so my kraut connotations were bad. So it's 4th of July. My friend Annette comes over. She has a, uh, she has some curatito. And curatito is a kraut that is a Latin flair on it. And she's like, hey, I brought this so maybe you'd want to try it. And, you know, I was like, okay, great. Awesome. Don't want to try it. I just, I mean like everything in the world. So we made grass-fed burgers. We had like traditional picnic food. We made grass-fed burgers um, and they were amazing. And um, I thought, I know what I'll do. I will take some of that kraut and put it on my burger. <laughs> and put it, you love sauerkraut, see, I know. See, so this was me, right? So I'll put some of that kraut on my burger and it'll kind of hide the flavors. And I'll just do like a tablespoon because she had warned me, only do a tablespoon, don't do a lot if you're not used to it, whatever. I'm like, okay. So I put it on my burger, take a big bite of my burger and I'm like, what? In the, it was like a, it was like a taste explosion. It was like a, just a flavor explosion in my mouth. And I was like, what 
in the world? Oh my gosh, that's really good. So by the end of the night, I'd eaten like two or three tablespoons of krauts because it was so good. And so she starts to take it around. She, I know, right? You can put it in anything, right, Ben? So she starts to take it away that night and there's like this much left in the, there's like this much carotito left in the bottom of the jar. And I was like, um, do you have more of that at home? And she's like, yeah. I was like, can you leave that? <laughs> I made her leave it with me and as I ate through it through the week I started panicking that it was almost gone <laughs> and I was like oh my god I'm almost out of crap what am I gonna do because I was like totally addicted to it I was addicted to the way that it made me feel it was amazing it was so amazing right <laughs> So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna freak out. So I call her, I'm like, you gotta teach me how to make kraut. And she started laughing. She was like, I thought you didn't like kraut. I was like, I do like it. <laughs> and so therefore, going forward, I am a kraut eater. I eat some kind of fermented food every single day. <laughs> I love that story. So I eat some sort of fermented food. Now this opened up, that little kraut experience opened up my eyes to fermented food. I started doing kombucha. I started doing, you know, all the fermented foods I could get my hands on. I wanted to try them all because I was so addicted to the kraut. Now I'm addicted to kombucha too. So um, so we do, com I do kombucha, I do kraut, I do one or the other during the day. I typically don't do both um, because I don't want to throw it off too far. Um, if you eat too many fermented foods, quite frankly, it'll give you the poops. And so you need to be a little careful, especially if fermented foods are new to you. You want to go slow. So no more than a tablespoon of kraut that we're going to make. This is the real deal, holy feel. Okay? <laughs> yes, I take no, thank you, Janie, for reminding me. I take no probiotics anymore. All of my probiotics come through my fermented foods. And I'm pointing to this empty jar. There are no fermented foods in there, but this is where it's going to end up. So, yes. Yes, this is far superior. Ben is absolutely right. It is real food. It is not supplementing. You guys know that I am not huge on supplements. I like getting my nutrients through real whole foods. And so this is I this is not supplementing. So we are going to, I know, it is a really empty jar, Carol. We're going to fill it right now. So um, let's talk about kraut really fast. And that is, I want to talk about store-bought. So a lot of you are thinking, thank you. I know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in love with them myself. I got them on sale too. Uh, <laughs> so we, um, we, let's talk about store-bought kraut. So you can buy kraut and the type of kraut my parents used to buy was in a can. Now that is made with vinegar. That's more like pickled cabbage than it is fermented cabbage. So you want to, <laughs> yeah, right. I know you count down the days, five days, four days, three days. So, um, but yes, you want to be sure and read your label when you're buying kraut because you do not want anything that has any vinegar in it because vinegar will kill off, um, um, oh, I'm jealous. Um, vinegar will actually kill off the probiotic. So you do not want to cook your kraut. If you cook your kraut, that's fine, but know that you're not getting that probiotic because you're killing it off in the heating process. So just being super, super careful. I know how many times can I say kraut in one broadcast? You guys should count them. The person that tells me how many times that I say kraut, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> so, so, but yes, <laughs> count the number of times. It's like a drinking game. Every time I say kraut, eat a spoonful. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> So, but, uh, but you can buy it in the grocery store, but you need to make sure that it's coming from the refrigerated six. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> You're guessing. Make sure it's coming from the refrigerated section and also make sure that it doesn't have any vinegar in it. My favorite brand, if I'm out and I'm in a pinch and I need some kraut or I'm traveling or something like that, is I buy kraut that's called Bubby's. It's my favorite. It is clean and crisp and I just love, I just love the flavor of it. Today's kraut count is... Uh, <laughs> you, guys, you guys are just throwing numbers up because you think you're going to win a splat. I know what you're doing there. I see, I see behind those numbers. <laughs> I love it. And I love that, by the way. Um, I'm giving away a splat tonight, by the way, in my Blab with the net about fermented foods at 6.30 at GoToKitchens on Blab.im. You're late. You haven't missed anything. <laughs> we haven't even started the kraut yet. Okay, so let's get down to it. So if you're going to buy it, make sure that it doesn't have vinegar and make sure that it is um, in the refrigerated section. Bubby's is my favorite. There are other brands along with other fermented foods in that section. So check them out. Uh, amazing. It's so easy to make your own kraut. A 
jar of bubbies, a jar this big of bubbies is, there's Edison, a jar of bubbies this big is going to cost you between eight and twelve dollars depending on where you live. We are going to make two jars, probably like one and a half actually jars, for about a cost of a cabbage head, a little bit of salt, and that's it. And the jars. <laughs> but we're going to reuse the jars anyway. So... You think you might have killed yours? Yeah, I, that's possible. We're going to talk about that. So yes, but you can buy it. You can buy it. Absolutely. So here's what you're going to need. Here are all the ingredients for sauerkraut. Are you ready? I'm about to throw it down right now. So get your pen and pencils out because you're going to want to know this. All right. You're going to need a head of organic cabbage. I buy organic cabbage when I make kraut. I use green cabbage because I'm a cancer survivor and there are con there are considerable benefits from green cabbage for uh, especially breast cancer. They actually help balance, green cabbage is actually better at helping balance estrogen in the body. So when, you, when I ferment it, it actually pushes that up. It makes it more available in my body. So it actually punches that up. So you didn't know that. Okay. So yes. So green cabbage for me, but you can use purple cabbage or green, whatever you like. All right, here we go. So you're going to need this. So this is your first ingredient is a head of green organic cabbage. If you do not buy organic, if you can't get organic, I suggest you hold off on making your kraut. And the reason is, is because the pesticides that are on that will actually amp up, will go up a level. And just like the cabbage is more available in my body for its nutrients, so are those pesticides when you ferment. So you want to be a little careful with that. I always suggest buying organic cabbage. It's super easy to find. It's like two bucks for a head of cabbage. So just, that's my, that's that's my tip there. Here's your other ingredients. Are you ready? Sea salt. Did everybody write those two ingredients down? Cabbage and sea salt. <laughs> That's all you need to make kraut. No joke. Not kidding. Thank you, Craig, by the way. Thank you for posting that up there. That's it. For basic cabbage, that is all we do is cabbage and sea salt. So if you got a pen out and everything and you're ready to write a bunch of ingredients down, I'm totally sorry. I got you. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, so this is actually a medium-sized head of cabbage. Yeah, <laughs> Carol, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yes, so we have cabbage and sea salt, and those are your two ingredients. This is going to cost you about $2 and 5 minutes. Uh, 5 minutes? $2 and 5 cents right here <laughs> to make cabbage. That is much better than paying $10, and you've controlled the ingredients. All right, so here's your two ingredients. So let's get busy. We're getting busy, y'all. Let's get busy. We're gonna make some kraut. So the first thing we do is we turn our camera so that you can see. <laughs> right, Kara? <laughs> That's awesome. On Facebook, Kara says, finally, a recipe I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove a couple of the outside leaves and we're going to set those aside. Now, we, you notice that I'm not washing my cabbage. Do not wash your cabbage. If you wash your cabbage, you're actually washing off what is going to create the bacteria that you want for your sauerkraut. So don't wash off your cabbage. So we're going to set these leaves aside. I'm going to pull off a couple um, very gently. Those actually have a purpose later on here in our broadcast. So, so we're going to pull off a couple of the top leaves and set those aside. So simple, setting those leaves right aside. Okay, now we're going to start cutting our cabbage, a very, very sharp knife. You can actually use a food processor if you want. My dad actually has this crank thing that he uses. You could probably use a spiralizer for this. You could use uh, lots of things for this, but I just like to do it with, yes, absolutely. Um, I actually like to do it with my knife because I do not like my cabbage to be really small pieces because it gets mushy and I have texture issues and I had rather it be crunchy than mush. So I actually like to use my knife, but you can use whatever you want there. So we're going to start and we're gonna make really thin slices. You see how thin I'm getting that? Can you see that? See that from that angle? We're gonna make really, really thin slices and you guys, unfortunately, are gonna to have to watch me do this. I have a very sharp knife that I'm using. Now I'm gonna turn my cabbage so I have a nice flat edge. We're gonna make thin slices all the way through the cabbage. Now you can see this does not take very long to do this. A sharp knife is so beneficial when you're doing this kind of work. Sorry guys, Edison barking again. A sharp knife is so beneficial because you can get the thickness that you want. Now the thickness of your cabbage does not 
dictate how um, how it will ferment. It's going to ferment. If you just put this big old head of cabbage in a giant mason jar and put some salt water in there, you are going to get a ferment. <laughs> so, but this just makes it easier to eat when it's like this. So super fine, as fine as you can get them. You know that I always think that a knife, a sharp kitchen knife, a sharp chef's knife is the best tool in the kitchen because it takes away the frustration in the kitchen. It eliminates, it eliminates that dull knife frustration. Hello from Germany. Hello from Colorado. We are making sauerkraut. How appropriate. How many of you make your own sauerkraut? Type in the number one if you make, <laughs> type in the number one if you make your own sauerkraut. Go on, type it in. If you make your own sauerkraut, type it in. <laughs> no. <laughs> you need to learn. We're learning right now. No. Oh, my goodness, you guys. It's so easy. I'm about to show you how easy it is. One. Yay. One, one. Unsuccessful. <laughs> Point nine. <laughs> so you're on your way. I get it. Not yet. Okay. So this is so easy, guys. I mean, it is ridiculously easy. For the amount of time that it takes... The worst part about making sauerkraut is waiting the four weeks. <laughs> there you go, ones, there's some ones. Waiting the four weeks for it to ferment. That's like the worst part of sauerkraut. In the meantime, you can buy, you can absolutely buy your own uh, sauerkraut at the store, so. Is Ben still here? I know Ben typed in a one if he's still here. <laughs> all right, so we're making these super thin cuts. We're almost through. I like to get it all. I go all the way to the back of my stem. You want my, somebody said they wanted my knife. <laughs> Sauerkraut is so German. You know, we're one of the only countries, we are one of the only countries in the world that does not uh, have a standardized fermented foods. Most other countries in the world have some sort of fermented foods that is standard for their cuisine. America is one of the only ones that doesn't. So, yes. All right, what does this go into? We save this, we do not throw this away. This goes into trashy veggie stock. I actually use the trash of my vegetables, not this part, let's just be crystal clear here, not this part, but this part actually goes into um, my trashy veggie stock. I put it in one big pot and I make it, I let it sit there for like eight hours and simmer and I use all of these bits for trashy veggie stock. We'll make it again, right? Cheap, like free vegetable stock from these parts. These parts that you were gonna throw away, <laughs> we make veggie stock. So I'm just gonna set that over in my garbage bowl and that's just gonna live there. So now we are gonna take, we are done with cutting. Now we're gonna take all of our cabbage and we're gonna put it in a big old bowl. Cause this is a big cabbage. So we need a big old bowl. By the way, like coolest, best kitchen. I know it is worth the wait, absolutely. Best kitchen knife ever. Yes, my trashy veggie stock. So awesome. <laughs> You're right. You're going to save them all. Put them in a Ziploc bag or whatever. Stick them in the freezer. Um, I actually just have a bowl that I toss everything in and put a cover over it um, in my freezer and make veggie, veggie stock like once a week. So now we have all of our cabbage down in a bowl. Super easy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. You saw how fast that went. We're going to go with a teaspoon of salt and we're going to taste it after we pound it. Whoops, that was a little more. Here's the key with salt. You want to go slow with your salt. I'm going to start with a teaspoon. The recipe actually calls for a tablespoon of sea salt. And this is just the Redmond's, if you want to, if you want to screenshot that. This is the Redmond's real sea salt. This is what I like to use. Yes, I do. <laughs> I use my stock for all kinds of recipes. Absolutely. You're only at the tip of the iceberg. So this is what I use. This is just a sea salt. Yep. Just finished cooking this morning. Ah, I know. It's so good. It's so good, Janie. It's so good. So this was just a teaspoon. Um, a little bit more, actually. Now then, let's talk about the wooden spoons. We're going to have to go fast. We're going to lose it on Facebook here. I may have to restart on Facebook in a minute. So here are my wooden spoon selections. Which spoon do you think I'm going to use? <laughs> we are about to pound this kraut. So I like to use a wooden spoon in a stainless steel bowl. You do not want to use a glass bowl. You want to use a wood bowl or stainless steel bowl. Right? This one over here. You guys are right. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> Yay, that's awesome. I love that, Kathleen. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So we're going to beat the kraut up and we're going to, we're actually going to get it to release its juices. If you only have spoons like this, that is absolutely fine. But try to pick one that has the largest flat edge. So see, this one's kind of pointy. So that's probably not one I would select. I would probably go with this one if I didn't have my flat one. This one is actually an antique. Um, I found it in an antique store, so it's pretty amazing. It's actually, I made turmeric kraut, and it's actually stained because of that. So so now you're just going to, in this bowl, you're just going to go downtown crazy, and you are going to beat the crud out of this kraut. <laughs> and as you do that, you're going to flip it over to get the, get the salt incorporated. You're going to pound it out. Pound, pound, pound. Now, this is a great frustration reliever. You see, I know, and Vegemite. See, in Australia, Craig is saying on Facebook that they have Vegemite in um, in Australia, which is a fermented food. See, we're like one of the only countries that doesn't have that sort of thing going on. Yeah, absolutely. So this takes a few minutes. This is a great stress reliever. <laughs> This is, uh, this, is, this is one of my favorite parts about doing this job, actually. The reason we do this is we want the cabbage to start sweating, or there's a big chunk in there I'm going to take out. See the stem in there? I'm going to actually take that out. Um, but you want the cabbage to start sweating and releasing its juices. That is super important in this process. This is how you get that perfect ferment. So too much salt. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> yep, that's what Craig says, and I know he's in Australia, so I know he knows. But <laughs> so, but um, but as you do this, um, you want to be careful with your salt. If you get too much salt, if you get too much salt, it will actually cause it not to ferment. If you get too little salt, it will actually cause it to cause it to mold. So you want to be right on with your with your salt. And I do mine by taste. A tablespoon for a medium cabbage is usually ideal. So that's usually ideal. So I'm just going to keep pounding away here. I will restart on Facebook. So how do you know? So you want it to have a salty taste, but you do not want it to be overpowered. So if it feels like it's overpowered with salt, you have too much salt. So you want like a, like a salt water taste. So think about what salt water tastes like. That's what you want. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what you want. So too much of that, too much salt can cause some mold, uh, excuse me, can cause it not to ferment and too little salt can cause it to mold. So you want to be right in the middle there. A tablespoon for a medium cabbage head is, I don't want to scare you with that, by the way, um, but a medium tablespoon, uh, excuse me, a tablespoon for a medium cabbage is going to be perfect. You see how already how we've broken down? how we've broken down the kraut a lot. I can see a little bit of glistening in the cabbage, which is what I want. And you can see where that flat edge, <laughs> it's not really trial and error. I mean, you have to trust me on that recipe that a tablespoon, a tablespoon for a medium head of cabbage is good. So, and you can see, I mean, you know what a medium head of cabbage, if it's a giant cabbage, you wanna do a little more. If it's a small cabbage, you wanna do a little less. It doesn't, it's not a science, but you do want to be careful. Some people think, oh, if I put more salt, it will ferment faster, which it's not. <laughs> In fact, it will stop the fermenting altogether because salt is actually an oxidizer, which actually starts to kill bacteria off because that's why sea salt is so good for you, by the way, is because, you know, when you have a sore throat and you gargle with salt water, right? You've been told to do that. That's because it's killing the bacteria off that's causing the sore throat. So same thing here. It will actually promote bacterial growth and help the cabbage break down and release that. But if you get too much, it will actually stop that process. So I guess it is a little bit of a science. All right. So you can see how much it's, this was a full bowl of cabbage. So you can see how much it's broken down after I started pounding it. I'm just going to go just a little bit longer here. Sorry. Ah, I have never had Vegemite. I'm totally, I'm, Craig, I'm telling you, I'm going to make it to Australia one day soon. And I am going to eat Vegemite because I've always wanted to try it. And getting it here in the States is probably not quite the same. It's probably like eating kimchi here in the States. Not quite the same. <laughs> so let's see if we can see this I don't know if you can see this in the camera but can you see you can't see there's a little bit of glistening on this cabbage it just looks a little wet 
Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So we've we've actually um, we've actually troubleshooted you there. <laughs> Marmite in the UK. That's interesting. I didn't know. I've never heard of that. Yes. Too much salt. So there's just a little bit of glistening in here in the bowl. I'm trying to get the camera angle where you can see it, but you can't. So my cabbage is just slightly broken down, which is what I want in the bottom of the bowl. Look at. You can really see it in the bottom. Let's see if you can see it in the bottom. Can you see that where it's kind of mushed down there in the bottom? That is what we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna taste it really quick. Mm, needs more salt. So give me just a second. It just has a barely, I can taste more cabbage than I can salt and I really want a nice even flavor. So I'm gonna add another teaspoon to this and that should do it. Let me just pound that in there really good. It's a process. It's not an event. <laughs> it's a process, not an event. All right. So we got that in there. We got it all nice and stirred up. We're all stirred up. <laughs> all the salt's in there. Let me just have one more taste. Hmm. Much better. I'm taking a not, I'm tasting a lot, uh, a lot of evenness in there with the cabbage and the salt. Oh my God. I could just eat that. Just that right there is so amazing tasting. This is going to be a, this is a nice sweet cabbage. This is going to be good kraut. So here's the next important step. You fill it, start filling your bowls, put two big heapings in there and you're going to pound again. Can you believe it? You're going to pound again down in there. The reason you're doing this is you are getting rid of air pockets. I need some more in there. You're getting rid of air pockets. Air pockets cause mold. <laughs> so to prevent it from molding, you want to get it a nice pound down into your jar. Get rid of those air pockets. I just go around the edges, pound, go down the middle, pound, and just keep that. Well, see that tight little pack that I have down in there? See how tightly packed it is right here? Can you see that over here on Facebook? See that? See that right there? I'm already starting to get a little liquid down in there. So I would continue this process. Let me finish this on Facebook. You guys hang with me on Periscope. So I would continue this process until my jar was completely full until about right here. Then I would take one of my cabbage leaves and I would take it and I would press it over the top of this just like this. Just like if this was full, it would sit right in the top of here. And that's to hold the kraut down into the, um, into the jar. Okay. And then, then I would put it in a, actually I'd leave it on my counter for 24 hours In 24 hours. I would go back and check it and see how much liquid that I have in here. There should be liquid covering the top of your kraut. If you do not have liquid covering the top of your kraut, guess what? You get mold. If you get mold, it is not all is lost unless you have mold down in here. You cover it right up to here. If you have mold up in here, you can actually spoon it out, put a fresh cabbage leaf on top and start over again. But you just don't want mold down in here. So this is gonna sit in a dark cabinet. Everybody says it doesn't have to be dark. Mine sits in a dark cabinet for four to eight weeks. The longer it sits, the more tart and more tangy it will be. You need to look at it every seven to 10 days and make sure that the lid is not leaking, first of all, and burp it. So if the lid has got a little bit of a boom, 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 you know, like the little bubble in it, just open it and burp the kraut and then tighten the lid back down and continue on with your, uh, with your process. So that's how you make kraut. Thank you guys so much for watching on Facebook. Um, I will be back here tomorrow. We're actually making kimchi tomorrow. Super excited about that. So thank you guys so much. You guys hang out on Periscope. I'm going to finish this kraut jar up for you guys. So thank you so much. Enjoy your afternoon and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. There's a link to the website right below. Go to kitchens.com. Okay, so I'm not done over here on Periscope. I was just talking to Facebook, sorry. <laughs> yes, I went way too fast, I know. I just wanted to make sure I got it in there because you can watch it over and over and over again on Facebook and you can't watch it here. So we're gonna continue. We're gonna continue on filling our jar as I make a whole bunch of noise. Continue to fill our jar and continue to pound down into our jar. Pounding in the jar.
This is a, I'm telling you, this is a, it's a process, but it's so worth it. And it really doesn't take that long. We're going to do this. We're going to do this in about 30 minutes here. So it doesn't take that long. Getting all the air out of there. Sorry, I missed comments. I'm sorry. I have to look at what I'm doing. That's the, I wish I had a counter like I could look over my counter, but I don't. I do ferment other things. Yes, I have yogurt fermenting right now. I'm going to show you guys after we finish this. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I'm pretty, I'm getting pretty good at multitasking. By the way, when you're working with ferments, you need to make sure that your hands are super clean. Before broadcast, I actually wash my hands really, really well. Um, I do not use antibacterial soap. I do not use antibacterial soap anywhere in my house ever, ever, ever because it is anti-life. <laughs> so I don't use it. That's a whole nother scope. I don't use antibacterial anything to wash out my dishes or anything like that. Um, so I just, I do wash out my jars in soapy water and I sterilize them in the dishwasher with no soap. So just heat just to sterilize them so that I don't get any leftover from the previous owner. Yes, I know. So make sure that your hands are nice and clean when you're working with fermented foods because you have bacteria naturally on your hands. And if you're touching your kraut or anything, um, sorry, if you're touching the kraut, you could actually pass that bacteria off. And that may not be the type of bacteria that you want. So make sure your hands are nice and clean anytime you're doing fermenting. Okay, so here's our cabbage leaves that we took off at the beginning of this whole thing. And we're just going to tear off a piece like so. And we're going to scrumble it up. We're going to make like a little, you know, make it kind of roundish so it'll fit in here. And we're going to take this and we're going to push it down into the jar. This is going to keep, when you get liquids in your jar, this is actually going to help keep that kraut down into the liquids, which is important. So you see how I've mashed it right on top of the jar? So that is actually going to keep that down in there. Now you can see how tightly packed this is in here. That's exactly what you want. You want it to be nice and packed with no air bubbles. You cannot just take it, the cabbage, and just stick it down in the jar. That is not going to work. You're going to get mold every single time. You need to make sure that it's packed down in there, and you do that with stabbing it. And go easy. Don't go downtown crazy. Um, <laughs> so, yes, they do have weights for this, but, I mean, I don't need all those fancy tools. I don't have enough room in my kitchen to keep all that stuff handy and so the mold is going to be fuzzy so it can be all kinds of colors but the mold is going to be fuzzy you'll know it's mold trust me you'll be like oh that's mold yes it'll be identifiable easily so um, in the morning so I'm going to put my lid on it we're going to put a lid on it we are going to do it without oxygen we are not doing this with oxygen I ferment my cabbage without oxygen and so um, so we're going to put the lid down on it I'm going to leave this on my countertop and I'm going to let it sit there for 24 hours. So this time tomorrow, I will open this, I will look at it and make sure that I have a liquid up in here. By that time, all of this liquid from the juice, this is just a mason jar, just a regular old mason jar. Yeah, just a regular old mason jar. Just It's a ball mason jar. It's just, yeah, standard jar. Actually has a date on top of it um, that I've written for some reason um, but I'm gonna let it sit on my counter for 24 hours then I'm going to look at it if there is not enough liquid in here then I'm going to add some filtered water do not use tap water all of the things in your tap water will start to kill off your bacteria your bacteria is actually pretty fragile so tap water has chlorine it has fluoride it has all kinds of bad stuff in it for bacteria this is what we're doing to our guts as well when we drink tap water is we're killing off all of that good bacteria this is why you need kraut <laughs> so you don't want to do that to your kraut so yes I just leave it sitting out make sure that it has enough water in here if there's enough liquid formed up here and you can kind of tilt your jar and see if it has enough liquid form up here it goes in my cabinet in my fermenting cabinet it's just my cupboard um, you can use distilled water, filtered water, spring water, anything that's chlorine free is what we're looking for. So yes, anything chlorine free and fluoride free. So you can get bottled water, anything like that is fine as long as it doesn't, it's not packed with a bunch of chlorine. So spring water is actually ideal, um, but not all of us have that just sitting around. So 
So filtered water, like the water that comes out of my fridge is actually highly filtered, um, almost too filtered, like it filters out my minerals and everything, which kind of bums me out, but um, but that's that's what I use. It's I have a really great filter in my fridge, so that's what I use, but, um, but yes. So if it doesn't have liquid, I'm gonna add it where it covers it. Now I'm not gonna fill the jar with liquid, I'm just going to fill it over the top of the kraut, okay? Does that make sense? <laughs> so you're just going to fill it over the top of the kraut. You're going to leave this in a cupboard, in a dark space, in a nice, you know, warm environment so it shouldn't be out in the garage or somewhere that's not uh, climate controlled. You want the cabbage, yeah. So the cabbage leaf doesn't necessarily have to be covered, but the kraut needs to be covered. No, you don't have to. You can just add it right on top. <laughs> yeah, how do I know that? <laughs> experience, lots of experience. <laughs> I've been fermenting now since July, and I've I I probably put a batch of kraut in every other week to ferment. So yes, lots of experience. So um so yes, so you want to make sure the liquid is there. So you're gonna leave that in there. It'd be ready in two weeks. You would have a ferment. So without any starter, you would have a ferment. If you have a jar of that you've already made, let's say, or you have a jar of bubbies sitting around that actually has juice in it you can actually start your kraut with that juice so if you have used a starter you can use whey as well if you do that you actually probably are at about two or three weeks for a full ferment if you're starting um, oh how do I know that my filter is great because I bought one specifically I bought an upgrade in my refrigerator filter so I know exactly what it filters out I have the paperwork Bubbies. <laughs> Bubbies is uh, is the one that you buy in the grocery store. Ah, I love that. Oh my gosh, right? It's so good on potatoes. I love kraut on just about anything. So, but yes, you could use a starter liquid from kraut that you've already made or from a kraut that you've bought, or you could use whey. Um, if you have a whey starter, you could use that. That's pretty advanced. So you would just use a couple tablespoons. So that's going to be plenty. Is my countertop the cutting board? Well, it's part of it, but no, I have other cutting, other surfaces. So, um, so yes, so leave that setting out, make sure it's covered. If it's not, then you need to put something in there to cover it with water or you're gonna get mold. Set this in your, in your dark space for four to six to eight weeks. The longer it goes, the tartar it's going to be, the more sour it's gonna be, and the more probiotics it's going to be. Um, yeah, this is just one, it's right over my dishwasher, so yes. Yeah, so super simple, big time money saving, big time money saving. Yes, you still salt, absolutely. You still salt if you use a starter. Good question, Dana, but yes, absolutely. Yep, so I'm just gonna leave that out. I'm gonna fill up this other jar and leave that out, but right now I'm gonna go get the, you guys think of more questions. I'm gonna go get my, um, my yogurt. Let's have a look at the yogurt that we made yesterday. Hold on, it's still in the oven. I haven't even taken it out of the oven. Oh, it's nice and warm. That's crazy how that oven light, that's crazy how that oven light keeps that warm all night. So yes, yeah, same process for red cabbage, yep. So here we go. Here's what it looks like so far. Oh, look at it, it's pretty thick. Look at that, let's open it. I have to tell you, I'm not gonna taste it because it's warm. <laughs> that kind of grosses me out, but we'll stir it and see what it looks like. Oh, beautiful. Can you see that? Uh, sauerkraut will be sour. Yogurt will be, um, well, it has a sour flavor as well. So this is the yogurt. Oh my gosh, look, 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 look. Look at that beautiful consistency. Woohoo! I made yogurt. <laughs> Yes, so on my website, there is a recipe for curatito. Um, curatito is a Latin base. So this is my yogurt, by the way. Okay, let me get finished with this. So this is the yogurt we made yesterday, fresh out of my oven. I'm actually going to strain it and get the whey off of it um, and use the whey to start these crop ferments because I've never done that before. So I'm going to actually pull the whey off of here and do that. So I'm going to strain it. So no, we didn't use a yogurt machine. You'll have to watch the replay if you didn't see it. I know, it's so cool, right? I'm like, to and it, like you open it and it smells like yogurt. It's like, what? I made that. I just got so excited just now. I'm such a nerd. I'm such a nerd. I'm a kitchen nerd. Um, I think Liam claims that nerdy bit, but anyway. I know, so cool. Yeah, so cool. 
<laughs> yes, it will be Greek yogurt. When I strain their way, it will be Greek yogurt. And I actually like a little thicker yogurt like that. So yes, it is dairy. Yep, Janie, it's full on dairy. This is cow's milk. So you, I, I, we talked about making it with nut milk and she's never had, uh, <laughs> I know, she's never had um, such a, uh, a good luck with nut milks. So sorry. Maybe I'll try it on my own sometime and see what I get. I know, right? I guess I do frankly well. I'm like, I love it. I love this right now. I'm just totally in love with this. I'm like, tomorrow morning I'm having yogurt because it's going to be cold. I'm gonna be excited. Um, okay. So there you go. So tomorrow we're making kimchi. Um, you guys can throw me out some questions on Facebook uh, in the VIP. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I know. <laughs> Janie, if fermenting is scary, Janie, you bring up an amazing point. Fermenting is a little nerve wracking because you're thinking to yourself, holy crap, I'm like growing bacteria and then I'm going to eat it. And we live in an antibacterial society, right? I mean, everything is antibacterial. All the soaps you can get. I think you can get mascara. You can get rubber bands that are antibacterial. So it is so crazy. It's so crazy that we live in such an antibacterial society. And this is what's causing all of our gut issues. These types of things, these antibacterial products that we're using actually is what's causing our gut problems. And so that is why we need to replace so much with fermented foods. Bacteria is our friends. It's the dairy that scares you. No, I understand. I understand. Yes, I know it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> so, so, but we're growing bacteria to replace the bacteria that we're stripping out through the medications that we're taking, through the water that we're drinking. I mean, we have to do our best to keep our bodies as fortified as possible. So, it is. We are tons and tons of bacteria. That's what we're made up of. And so, when you start killing that off, you know, antibacterial is anti-life, basically. Antibiotics means anti-life. And so you're killing that sort of stuff off in your gut. So, you, I know, it's it can be, but this is actually super easy. If you've never fermented, I say start with kraut. If you've never fermented anything, I say start with kraut. That is something that just dripped off here. Um, that is the easiest ferment, and it's just a basic kraut. If you want more flavor, so if you are thinking, I am totally not eating that cabbage and salt after it's fermented, then I want you to try, well, that's, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one, kombucha being your first one. That was my dad, too. He just went all out. He's like, I'm going with the kombucha. <laughs> what? He, he grew his own scoby. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, and so... Uh, why do you need a yogurt machine? Uh, you don't, I don't have a yogurt machine. I don't use a yogurt machine. We just use the oven for this. And we actually, we use the oven light. <laughs> That's all we used. <laughs> we didn't use, we didn't use anything other than the oven light. So yes. Uh, they are not linked to my, nope, uh, Moira, they're not linked to that. Um, I, yeah, there's a lot of linking that needs to happen. I'm actually working on that right now. <laughs> so, so no, they're not linked. They're, and sometimes they don't even get shared over to the Facebook, to the GoTo Kitchens Facebook page or the VIP page. They just kind of live on my profile out there. So, yes. So, but if you're just starting out with ferments, kraut is the easiest thing to do. Curatito actually has a very... Um, kind of a Latin Mexican taste to it and is very easy to eat. It is yummy, yummy, yummy. So yes. Oh, why do they make yogurt machines? Uh, because they make a machine for everything. <laughs> they make machines that, I mean, they, they have a machine that would cut up your cabbage for you, but you don't need a machine. You need a knife. <laughs> I missed that or broth. I missed that first part. And then it said, or broth. Sorry, frankly, well, I missed that. Um, all right, you guys, I'm going to scat out of here. I'm going to actually wait for Frankly Well to put that back in there. <laughs> yes, I am a simple kitchen cook. I like to, people are always asking me, have you tried this? Did you get one of these? Like the most fancy tool I have is a $19 Vigetti. <laughs> well, okay, that's not true. That's kind of, that's not really a fancy tool. That's like a staple in my kitchen because I use it almost every single day. But that is, that's the, that's the biggest tool that I use that's like electric. Everything else is done by hand because I like, can I combine, oh crap, I missed it again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I totally missed it again. But when I'm teaching you guys things, I don't want you to have to go out and, and buy, um, 
you can do carrots in the same mix. Yes, you can do carrots in the same mix or you can do it separately. Um, fermented carrots are actually amazing. So either way is absolutely fine. So yes, but the Curatito is actually on the website. Curatito on the website. Just go and type in sauerkraut at GoTo Kitchens and you'll find it. Cynthia is in the house. Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> we just made sauerkraut. It's right here. Um, so yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing out. Yeah, fermented carrots are amazing. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everybody. So I'm going to scat out of here. I will see you guys tomorrow. We are make, Actually, I'll see you this afternoon because I'll have an inspirational um, one. I like kraut. Everyone else likes... Yeah, garden veggies. Yeah, I understand. And that's, that's, that's absolutely, I mean, you can ferment just about anything. You can do like a fermented asparagus is kind of amazing. <laughs> so carrots, I mean, you can do all kinds of fermented vegetables. I just like for people to start. So wife just spilled crowd juice all over the kitchen rug. <laughs> I know here comes the smell. Ah, one. That's what I, that's the funny part that I put in the title because when you burp this, it, there is going to be a foul odor. Do not let that throw you off. <laughs> you need to go get jars. They're at the grocery store, Janie. You can buy like a dozen for like nine bucks. Super cheap. Um, but when you burp these, when you burp this kraut, it will actually throw off an odor that smells like somebody passed some gas. And that's just the fact of fermenting. But it doesn't, the first time you open it completely, that and you put it in the refrigerator after that, um, it will actually, that smell goes away very quickly. And then you just smell like this really earthy, like cabbagey smell, so... Yes, you're welcome, Rosemary. You're welcome so much. Thanks for being here. Rosemary, Robin just went to mail your splat today. How do you burp it? You just turn the lid. Here, let me get one and I'll burp one for you. I have others. Hold on, Janie. I'll help you out. This is actually a Caratito. This is actually a Caratito that's been in there for eight weeks. <laughs> it's been in there a long time, and I am super excited about it. See, the Caratito has like, uh, it has carrots and red peppers and uh, jalapenos and onions. It has all kinds of amazing flavors in it. So yes, so when you, <laughs> can't wait to get your splat. So when you burp it, let me see if I can open this jar. It's just gonna give a little, oh, I just burped them, so they're not gonna make a noise. Dang, so when you burp it, it's gonna go, pshh. Just like if you were opening a soda, that is the gases that are building up in here. So yes, you see that? Curatito, in my opinion, is great for beginner kraut eaters because it has tons of flavor. Like if you're making tacos, or you're making nachos or anything like that, using this instead of lettuce, uh, amazing, right? Open a window, <laughs> right? Who did that? <laughs> Robin's always like, did you just burp the kraut or... <laughs> Like, I just burped the crowd. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, this is done with green cabbage, carrots, uh, peppers. It has jalapenos. You know, is that the dog, right? <laughs> That's so funny. Um, it has jalapenos. It has onions. Um, it has, um, what else does it have in it? It has several things in it, actually. It has red uh, chili flakes in it. Yeah. Ah, that's so crazy. You're like the second person I've heard that says that they can't smell. That's interesting. That's interesting. Has he never had it like since birth? That's very interesting. Yes, this is super good. This is like one of my favorite krauts. And, and I, it's funny because I don't let anybody have it. I'm like, when we, when people come to my house and they're like, can I have a, can I have a little bit of sauerkraut? Because I'm kind of known for it now. And I'm like, yes, but I never serve them my curatito. Because <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> is that true? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's terrible. That's scary as well. You have to tell me that story sometime, uh, if you want to, of course. <laughs> that is very sad. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I <laughs> send you some because you want to taste it. No, it's mine. No, this is not pickled. Pickled would be using uh, vinegar. There's no vinegar in here. This is um, <laughs> one. Um, this is this has no vinegar in it. This is just water with all of these veggies and salt, and it just ferments on its own, just like that. So, yeah, tons of probiotics. If you're new to eating uh, fermented foods, please go slow. One tablespoon a day maximum. I would say a teaspoon a day to start off with. If you don't, you may have the poops, and I don't want you cussing at me because you get the poops from eating fermented foods. It will. The Curatito is on the website, yes, um, but it will. It will actually give you four weeks. Four weeks sherry is a good ferment. Uh, longer is better for taste, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> 
Yeah, just sipping the juice. Absolutely. I love that. We we were talking about kraut shots the other day. We we're like, kraut shots. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. The one tablespoon max. You just don't want to get the poops. It won't give you diarrhea. You'll just go to the bathroom really well and you'll be like, wow. I mean, it will clean you out. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Cynthia. Um, but yeah, so it will clean you out really well. And if you, now maybe you want to be cleaned out. It's great for that. Actually, when I've been on vacation, um, yeah, make sure you get your electrolytes right when I've been on vacation I tend to get a little stopped up just like every other person on the planet almost um, and so I get a little backed up I get a little constipated uh, <laughs> I get a little constipated we're going there we're go everybody we're going there right now I get a little constipated and so when I come home I actually have two to three tablespoons of kraut like the night that we get home or the day that we get home next day problem solved <laughs> So yes, problem solved. And uh, so that, and, that, and then I'm right back on track. So yes, I know <laughs> it's a poop scope. I know I hate that, but we go there a lot. You can't talk about health without talking about poop. It's an impossibility. It's an impossibility. I know. But when I, when I, I am telling you when I do one-on-ones with people, which is not very often, um, I do one-on-ones with people and I, I, I coach them through, you know, the, their eating habits. Um, <laughs> total guy talk, I know, right? No, girls talk about it too. You just don't, we just don't talk about it in front of guys normally. Um, but when I do one-on-ones, one of the first thing I ask them is, tell me about your poop. What does it look like? <laughs> I want to know. I mean, don't send photos or anything. I don't want to see it, literally see it. But I want to know. I want to know how many times you go a day. Um, so, yes. Yep. Yeah, I do. I try that, Roz. None of that works. I just get out of my habits. Yep, cycle of life. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Proud of my poops. I love it. That's awesome, Janie. <laughs> I, I know. It's Sometimes it's just glorious. It's like, yay, happy poops. <laughs> yes, I know. See, Frankly Well knows. You have to have that conversation. You cannot. I cannot properly coach you if I do not know what your poop looks like and how often you're going. So now I don't want photos. <laughs> yeah. Right. I had one guy ask me that. He's like, I can, you want me to just send you some photos? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> just, just explain it. <laughs> just describe it. That's all I need. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's all I need is a bunch of poop photos in my inbox. That's awesome. Don't anybody do that by the way. Well, it's, yeah, well, that's what the doctors should ask. I don't know if they do, <laughs> the pooperazzi. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is totally degraded, but when we're talking about fermented foods, we have to talk about it, so. Hey, see, I know, right? Yeah, you get that green, absolutely. Yeah, when you start eliminating uh, meats out of your diet, your poop changes a little bit, so absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm 90% um, plant-based. That's how I eat, 90% plant-based and 10% everything else, and um, and most of that is raw, so 50% of that is raw, and so it's, yeah, I have a lot of green poop. It used to scare me. I was like, I was talking to my naturopath one day, I'm like, um, my poop is green, is that like normal? <laughs> I'm like whispering, so I have some green poop. This is my phone, by the way, so, because I'm, my phone's over there, and so I'm over, did I have some green poop? Is that, is that normal? <laughs> I can't believe I still have a crowd here after all this conversation. Yes, people are very close-minded, Sherry. Absolutely. I run into it every single day. People are like, I want to be like you. I want to be healthy. I'm like, it's work. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, I mean, I have friends that are younger than me and they're like, how come you have so much energy? What is wrong? I'm like, it's your diet. <laughs> Just plain and simple. It's your diet. So yeah, poop is a part of life. Absolutely. Everybody poops. Everybody. Every single one of you poop. <laughs> it is sad. Yep. <laughs> I know. I didn't have a banana here. I had to use mine. Hello? Yes. <laughs> oh, he doesn't want my food bill. Yeah. Actually, I, it's expensive as well. I mean, I won't lie to you. It's expensive to eat the way that we eat. Our food, our grocery bill, pre-cancer, I would go to the grocery store and my grocery bill was about between $50 and $75 every week for two people. It was really consistent. We were eating tons of processed food. I didn't even realize what I was doing. Um, and so, <laughs> that's right, it has to come out. If it's not, it's a problem. So, but, um, so yes, and now I spend between 100 
and $130, $40, depending on what week it is, um, every week at the grocery store. So yes, it is more expensive, but, but I visit the doctor a lot less, and I feel better, and I have more time. Yeah, can't afford not to eat well, right? I just made other priorities in my life. So, yep, it's my priority. Yep. <laughs> yeah, especially, yeah. Uh, my, my oncologist used to charge um, for, it depends on where I was seeing her. If I was seeing her like in an emergency, she would charge anywhere from uh, $700 a visit to $3,000 a visit. So, yeah, I'll just eat the groceries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's true. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, we eat all organic, so it's it it can it can cost a little more. It is. It's absolutely, Kristen. You're spot on there. It's an investment in your health. People ask me all the time, "How am I going to afford that?" And I'm like, "How do you afford not to?" I mean, honestly, if if you thought that you could be more productive because you felt better, would not be worth the investment. So. Yeah, I, I see that a lot, but that is, it, it's a, it's, he's, um, the investment is misplaced, in my opinion. So, yes, my, the investment is misplaced. And so it's, you know, it takes time and effort and money. And it, you know, you can't spend six hours on the couch at night watching TV. You have to be in the kitchen making your food and enjoying, you know, and grocery shopping and meal planning. I mean, it takes all of these things. I won't lie. It's not, it is not a, um, yeah, right, I know. <laughs> uh, no, it won't. I'm sorry to tell you. Jamie, it won't. So sorry, there was a lot of comments there. I missed a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Penny wise and pound foolish heart. Uh, yep, yep, it's absolutely, absolutely true. I believe it completely. So yeah, nope, sorry. Plagued with the same problems, by the way. It's us dark-haired girls. We can't hide it. Everybody has it, by the way. It's not just you. It's everybody. It's just we have dark hair and it just shows up. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Sherry, that's a huge win that he joined a gym. He's going to just keep feeling. You're going to keep feeding him better and better food. And he's going to keep feeling better and better. And you're going to see a huge change. I can already see it. I can already see it happening. I can already see it happening. When he was on that blab last week, I was like, go you. That's awesome. So you guys just keep changing and evol evolving together. It's it's all happening for you. It's all happening. I know. Janie said the other day something so powerful. Um, she said, I realized that I am better than the foods I was eating. And that like hit me over the head like a ton of bricks. I was like, Wow. That is a really powerful statement. Janie, kudos to you. Um, I have I've said that a hundred times over um, to people because I just thought it was, I know, it's good, right? It's really, really good. Janie, there's Janie right there with the little sunglass emojis. Totally. Ooh, I love that. That's so fun, Juan. Not fair. Not fair. <laughs> we we are so seasonal here. Our markets are so seasonal. Our winter market is really good, but um, but it's not great for produce. So yeah, I know. Totally lucky, lucky, lucky. You'll have to scope it so we can see it. <laughs> so I know, right? It was a beautiful thing she said. I realized that I was better than the food I was eating. Beautiful, beautiful. I know summer is the best, absolutely. I'm I uh, I love summer for food, but you know what? I mean, we do. I know it's beautiful. Um, it it's um, you know it's it's a we eat well in the winter too. So yes, scope it so we can see the farm picking your own veggies. Oh my gosh, that would be I would I would love. I want a farm so bad. I don't want to run it. <laughs> I just want it to be there, like Leslie's farm, like the go-to kitchen's farm. And but I want somebody else to run it. Yeah. Thank you, Sherry. I just, I, I adore you. I adore you. Thank you. Um, but I want a go-to kitchens farm and I want it to have chickens and goats and cows so I can get my own milk and I can get my own beef and I can get my own chicken. I want all that, but I want somebody else to do it. <laughs> one of these days, one of these days, I want to be like Marie Antoinette in <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like Marie Antoinette. Yeah. So because she had that beautiful little farm out at Versailles, 
and which is gorgeous. I've been there actually. She had this beautiful little idyllic farm that she would go and work, but really other people's <laughs> off with their head, right? Um, but other people would actually run the farm. Um, that's that's what I want. <laughs> I want somebody to. I'll pay for the farm. <laughs> I'll pay for everything. I just want somebody else to run it. <laughs> so, yes. And I want to go there on weekends. That's what I want. That would be like the ideal situation. <laughs> <laughs> that was very bratty of me, but very true. You can all come visit too. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Fancy Pants Farm. That's totally what we're calling it. Fancy Pants Farm. And you guys will all know what I mean. You'll be like, oh, I remember that scope when she was talking about that. I know, right? It does sound like a community garden. I just, I just know nothing about it, so... Yeah, you can't have farm animals. Yeah, I would love to have goats, chickens... It is, absolutely. Getting your hands, feet, everything. That's why the beach is so healthy for us. This is why uh, the majority of human beings on the planet crave being at the beach. Because it's we are actually, because of the water and the sand, we walk around barefoot on the beach. Um, and we crave that community with the earth and we don't even realize it. Yeah, I know. I need to run too. Holy cow. I've been here for an hour. So I, we're just having so much fun. I didn't want to leave. Yes, touch the earth. Absolutely. I ground all the time. Yeah, no, that's why we do, though. That's why we crave it, so. Um, I do, but I don't ferment in those jars, Sherry. Um, I use them for storage, but I don't use them for fermenting, so, yeah. No, grounding is integral, and again, that's why we all crave that, because the sand and the sun and the sea, um, those combinations, those three things that you get when you're at the beach is very powerful to the human emotion, so. Oh, that's sad. Huh? I oh, it looks like I have a, a a cute mole above my lip, like like a movie star mole. Totally getting one of those too. <laughs> totally kidding. I'm kidding. All right, you guys. I'm Audi. Have an amazing afternoon. I will be back in a little while um, with my inspirational scope. And so, hope. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm guessing your name is Frank, right? Is that am I right, or is that just your? Am I wrong? Frankly, well, <laughs> I'm just. Yeah, just guessing, taking a wild guess out there. So, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you guys for being here. Hi, Raj, thank you for being here. Yes, Frank, okay, good. I'll start calling you Frank instead of by your whole username. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. I will be back a little bit later this afternoon. I gotta go, th that's right, the Cindy Crawford Mole. Um, I gotta go do some uh, phone calls to try to get my website straightened out. And, um, and I've been asked to guest blog on a pretty major site. And I'm pretty jazzed about it. And I have to have a phone call about that. I'll tell you more about that later. But yeah, I've been I've been asked to do a guest food blog on a major site. And so I'm really excited about that. So yeah. Thanks for the poop scope. You're welcome. <laughs> Poops United. Yeah. So we'll have more news about that um, as we get a little bit further along in the process. I don't want to spill the beans until there's beans to spill. Because I want to make sure I want to do it. <laughs> so it's really the big thing there. So yes, I know. I'm pretty excited about it. All right, love you guys. I will see you a little bit later this afternoon. Have a great afternoon. Until then, um, hashtag inspiration is inspirational scopes. Hashtag light bulb is food and wellness scopes. So please, that's how I title them. Please check out gotokitchens.com. Um, right in the title of the scope, gotokitchens.com, G-O, the number two kitchens.com. Please consider becoming a VIP. There's nothing for sale. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not even trying to sell you sauerkraut. Um, nothing for sale over there. The only thing that I want you to buy is I want you to buy into your own health. And that's it. I consider myself a light bulb expert because I like for you to have light bulb moments like, oh, geez, it's really easy to make kraut and you only need two ingredients. That's a light bulb moment. Thank you, Rosemary, for putting that in there. Thanks, Frank, for being here. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Juan. Thanks, everybody, for your fun comments today. I will see you. <laughs> that's right. Easy peasy. I will see you guys a little bit later this afternoon. Bye.